They roll, tumble, and stretch for hundreds of miles, the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. In the summer, it's a canopy of color, an ancient garden of mountain laurel and wild rhododendron. There are places tucked away in the shadowy thickets of the Blue Ridge where time, it seems, stands still, sheltered from the distractions of a complicated, distant world. It was in one of these places, at the end of a twisting, winding trail on an isolated hillside, where we found Ruby Geis, starting her daily ritual of chores. You don't see many, you know, houses standing like this. It's old. Think about what I'm going to do today, all the work and carrying in wood, and it's a lot of work. It is a routine that Ruby knows well. In fact, it's all she's ever known. This old mountain cabin is home, where two generations of the Geis family were born and raised. I got to get wood in. Early in the morning, start a fire, and then wait till it gets good and warm, and keep putting wood in, make biscuits, and make my coffee. My routine. Nope, they never had much use for things like electricity, telephones, indoor plumbing, or automobiles. Now, after so many years, Ruby's is the last voice left on this old mountain farm. I've had people tell me before this house like a museum, which I didn't think, you know, about that. I know it's old, you know, antique. This is a rocker. It's probably over 100 years old. My grandpa's. A lot of people said my parents were pioneers. They weren't, but that's where everybody lived, you know, back in. This is a quilt that my mother made here in this house. She done a lot of putting stitches in it. Even though Ruby's held on to a way of life long forgotten by the rest of the world, she always had brothers and sisters around. Well, only a few short months ago, it was just Ruby and one brother left on the farm. And after he passed away, Ruby was alone for the very first time. What's it like here now? Lonesome. Nobody here. It's lonesome. You see, she can take the enormous chores and monotony of life without modern conveniences. But it is loneliness that can't be conquered. When I was young, growing up, <laughs> that was our best days. We didn't worry any back in. After 68 years, Ruby is leaving her hidden shoulder of the Blue Ridge Mountains for good. After my brother passed away, it, it, was, it wasn't the same here, you know, so I decided I want to get away. This is the beans I can. Beans, peaches, this pepper. He helped cut wood, you know, and done all that, and I can't do all that. Ruby, by the way you're talking, it sounds like you're gonna leave all this behind. I don't wanna live back up here another winter. It's too rough in here. But you've been here, what? 60. Eight years. So I need to change, see, getting arthritis and everything in my hands. Or rubbing clothes. That's, you know, I need a washing machine and all that. That's a reason. Like stepping right out of a page of history, Ruby will lock the door of her past behind and move away close to town, following the tiny stream like the trickling melted snow. When she takes her last step off that cabin porch, she'll be taking a step into another century. I'm moving to Bar Rock Estate Road and have me a mobile home brought in there. I'm excited because I'm moving in the home, you know, where I have power and everything. I'll have a TV, washing machine, dishwasher, electric stove, and heat for the winter. Ruby, you're leaving, but... What's this place mean to you? Been home to me all my life. 
But I guess now you figure it's time to move on? Mm -hmm. Time to move on. You know, think back what all you, you know, you memories you know you've done, you know. It's gotten too hard for me. I just can't do it all. In the mountains of North Carolina, at the end of a tiny trail, we know a place that time forgot. Ruby Geis, the woman who never drove a car and never had much use for what the 20th century had to offer, is coming down from her mountain of memories. These are her last days of the only life she has ever known. A way of life, it turns out, that is no match for things like loneliness and long, hard winters. I've lived here 68 years, so about three or four more weeks, I'll be leaving here. I'm going to cry. <laughs>